and Kahungu takes on supervision of informal settlements. Health Minister Kalumbi Shangula, during an update session held at the COVID-19 Information Center, announced that three patients who tested positive of the coronavirus have successfully recovered. It seems as though Namibia is doing well in terms of battling COVID-19. Health Minister Kalumbi Shangula announced that three out of 16 patients who tested positive were successfully cleared of the coronavirus. A total of 333 samples were tested for COVID-19. Of these 16, which represent 4.8% of the total tested, of the total tested positive. 15 of those who tested positive were placed in our isolation and treatment facility, facilities, where they received medical and psychosocial support. One person was hospitalized and received intensive treatment. Three patients were, success were successfully treated and cleared of the coronavirus. For those who follow, that is case number three, case number five, and case number six. In the same breath, Shangula cleared rumors of Namibia receiving COVID-19 vaccines from the Chinese ambassador to Namibia. Recently, there was a clip circulating in the social media of a minister of health and social services ostensibly receiving COVID-19 vaccines from the Chinese ambassador. In fact, the photo was taken at the occasion when I received test kits and not vaccines from the ambassador. Most of the media houses witnessed that event. I want to stress the point that such framing are not helpful but counterproductive to our noble effort. Zero COVID-19 related deaths have been recorded so far. However, one patient is reported to be in a critical condition and is currently being treated at an intensive care unit. Make the most of Easter with these great savings at Spa. Get Spa pressed and squeezed fruit juice for only $13.99 and Bobtail dog food for just $124.99. Do you think he needs help? No. Spa, we are here for you this Easter. The novel coronavirus 2019 has forced many Namibians to abandon their foreign duties and return to their home country. The second quarantine group who arrived in the country last month is commending government for its efforts. Anna Marie, who was under quarantine at Marintal in the Hartab region, shared her experience of being under quarantine for 14 days under the watchful eye of the Namibian government with today on one. The advice that I would give to everyone, including the state, is to at least try and uh, communicate with the airlines, with the passengers, so they can at least know the destination, so they can also um, communicate with their families, so they can also at least have some supplies or in case if they need some money, if it is needed. Uh, so I think that communication is quite important because when we got here on the plane we were told that we're going to hard up. 
some people that had families here and all of us were under the impression that we're going to live close to Vintuk so we were under the impression that we were going to get certain supplies from our families during the course of our stay there which did not happen but um, um, some of the parents drove out and others did not because it was just too far away so I think that communication of just letting the people know where they'll be going in advance is much easier for the people coming in, also for the psychological effects that it has on the people, not knowing that, or I mean like I have winter clothing because I came from a cold country and I went on a residency and not on a visit, so some people had the summer clothing and I didn't, you know, so it was washing, washing, washing. They were ready, they, um, uh, I mean obviously in the beginning we were trying to find our feet and uh, also because the rooms are super spread out but everyone had a room, uh, families could share a room, they got bigger rooms and uh, we had good food, three meals a day, two bottles of uh, water a day. Uh, which might be too much as an as a environmental activist when it comes to plastic usage, but um, um, the service was really good. I think the NWR guys, they were, they were on, on, on point, I must say. Marie added that she is happy that none of the people who were with her at the facility showed any COVID-19 symptoms. And a mandatory quarantine. Basically, what that meant was that um, we had to go into a quarantine facility and it was more to, I think the reason why they did it, it is to stop the prevention, which I think was a good move, uh, but also to actually contain it. But luckily, none of us tested or showed symptoms. Uh, we still have to self-isolate ourselves for the next seven days. But uh, so far we are all good. It's no one, nobody was sick. Uh, but like I said, the self-quarantine or the quarantine was mostly just to contain the spread of the virus. I'm very excited. <laughs> I'm very excited. I have uh, children, so I will be busy with them. And uh, uh, we'll have a lot of catching up to do, uh, especially for some students and also for everyone that works with the internet because we did not have Wi-Fi or um, Wi-Fi that was given to us and also the network was very poor so we mainly relied on this 3G MTC uh, voucher or super away. She however advised the Namibian nation to follow the guidelines that have been set aside by the World Health Organization and the Ministry of Health and Social Services. Very good at swimming. Look over there. What is it, Jabu? I'm not sure. Can you see what it is? Come on, everybody, let's go down. Come on, let's go With the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic, businesses and companies have shut down in compliance with directives by the head of state in order to curb the spread of the virus. Side by Side Center, a non-profit organization which supports children with special needs, is the latest center to be highly affected by the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic, as it is on the verge of facing a possible permanent shutdown due to frozen grants which are used for their daily operations. As a non-governmental organization, Side by Side Center is facing the reality of a possible permanent shutdown. This is due to grants for the center which have been frozen until further notice. 
These grants were essential for keeping the centre running during this time and beyond. Side by Side is an organisation that supports children with special needs, um, specifically in the informal settlements, so a lot of our children are from there. The biggest problem now, obviously, that we face is the fact that the children is already very isolated um, overall, and now with the COVID-19 and locking down, this means that the children is, in the end, even more isolated and even more um, not concentrated on. So in the end, side by side, really supports with um, exercises, with training activities, parent workshops, um, reaching out to the children, making sure they have physically and emotional needs uh, is being met. Um, so all of this is being done through side by side. It's a heartbreaking situation uh, because we've spent seven years to, to create this blueprint that's actually working for disability in Namibia and that's working for early intervention. I was very very excited um, about three months ago we decided to launch the neuro clinic um, which means that we can identify children shortly after birth and then immediately start with a support structure for these parents this in effect will mean that we are back seven years and we have to start when the COVID is over we have to start all over again it breaks my heart because 150 families at this stage is getting support from our network and from the services that we give. Um, so I think that is, at this stage, the biggest challenge is on a monthly basis, we have a building to cover, we have rent to cover. Um, my staff members have been part of this centre since it opened its door seven years back. Um, so although um, they are doing a lot of this on their own time and giving a lot of themselves, obviously we have to pay salaries, they have families, they have to live. It's the, the children um, in the informal settlements that I'm really worried about. Is um, Did we do enough for their parents to really understand? Is um, is the education we gave enough for them to carry on what we've started at Side by Side? Um, I think with disability and understanding, um, it's a growing process. Uh, what your child needs this year is not the same what he will need next year. As they start achieving um, their milestones, the needs differ. Director of the Centre, Huipi van Veek, has introduced three programmes during this pandemic, which includes one-on-one -on -one visits to the parents as they are not able to use the building facility at the centre. She is also assisting parents by providing food packages to the parents registered with the centre living in the informal settlements. We've been working over the last two weeks, I've been working on three different um, programs. Um, one of them is one-on-one -on -one visits. So I'll go to the house, uh, we'll take a little package, um, check up on the children, show some, some support, help the parents to understand what positioning is about, how can I play with my child, not use expensive things. So we take it to their homes and we teach them how to use a pair of socks as a ball. Also visiting the parents, we are taking some flyers that we got from from um, UNDP PRP um, that they gave us. So we will do some training on what COVID-19 is and how to protect my family, especially my child with a disability. We will also take handmade masks um, and we will teach the parents that when they're working with their children to please cover themselves, when they're coughing, you know, all the important things. Um, so we will make sure that they understand what the effect of the COVID-19 might have on their family should one of them contract the disease. It's also making up food packages and taking it to the homes to make sure that the children's being fed correctly, um, that we keep the vitamins and proteins up, um, because that's one of the most important things about fighting this virus is to keep the immune system strong. We're also working, my team and I are working on small videos um, that when I go and visit, I can Bluetooth it to their phones. If they have smartphones, if they don't, then I'll show the video to them on my phone and we can do some of the exercises at home so we can make it on small videos to make it easy for the family and the community to use on their own children during this lockdown period. Van Veek is therefore asking for assistance as the centre is in desperate need for support to continue its operations in order for them to keep on assisting the special children in the most vulnerable communities who tend to be neglected in society.
The mayor of the city of Winduk has taken it up on herself to supervise informal settlements in Winduk, whose residents, she says, have been cooperating well with municipal officials. From inspecting the informal settlements, the city of Winduk mayor Francina Kahungu says her team has identified more than 40 broken communal toilets that the municipality plans to fix. She, however, warned against the vandalizing of the newly installed water tanks, urging residents to take ownership of the tanks. Another task is to make sure that where I found the heaps of dirty things, I call the people from solid waste, they remove them. And we also came up with another responsibility to assess all the communal toilets so that we record them and see what can be done. And I have to mention that there are many. We were reliable informed that some people already, they, they, they try to remove the metals inside so that they go and sell them at the scrap yards. Mm -hmm. So we are saying, since it's for all of us and City of Ventuk officials cannot be everywhere. Each and every residence, we, the police, or be make that thing as your own. So let us report and let's tell each one not to vandalize and not to steal this metal system because it does not help us. Take note, we started, it's almost a week now. And now if people have to steal again metals, it will take maybe more than now two weeks because here you have to buy again and we do not have money just to buy things being stolen then buy again so in short let us look at look after this property they do not belong to municipality it's not municipality stepping water they belong to all of us and i truly believe that with the cooperation and the happiness we observe from the residents they will look after this property the mayor further extended her gratitude to the donations received towards the fight against COVID-19 and applauded those who have been adhering to the lockdown regulations. I am happy so far we are receiving a lot of donations in the form of food. Mm -hmm. Very many, very few people who do not have access to food. And as a result, it means we can lock down ourselves in our houses. Mm -hmm. And I'm also happy to observe that from the end of the month until yesterday, there were many people kind of going out, but to be honest, from today, only few people are outside. The majority, they are abiding to the rules of lockdown. I'm happy for that. Let's continue with that spirit. The virus is real. Let us protect ourselves. Let's wash our hands. Let's stay inside our houses. Even as we want to finish this job which we are doing so that we also join the others in the lockdown process. As part of its additional precautionary measures against the COVID-19 pandemic, the Winduk Municipal Council has closed all its municipal parks and recreational facilities, suspended gatherings of more than 50 people and reconnected non-paid water accounts for the lockdown period. Akiri, Akiri, this is Akiri, she has a secret. Tell us, tell us. When the sun goes down, Akiri goes to sleep, and she enters a world where all the animals speak. Akiri, 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 Akiri. But there is something strange about this magic land. The animals speak English, which she doesn't understand. But if you help her out, we know it can be done. Akili can learn English and it will be fun. Akili! In other leading stories, on the occasion of World Health Day that is commemorated on the 7th of April annually, President Harry Gengov applauded healthcare workers for their courage. The President expressed his appreciation to healthcare workers in Namibia for their dedication and the sterling job they continue to do in saving lives, especially during the time of the COVID-19 outbreak when their lives and those of their families are at highest risk. President Gengob urges the nation to appreciate the sacrifices made by health workers 
by rendering them all the cooperation they need, especially at this difficult time. The President further urges the people of Namibia to treat COVID-19 with the seriousness it deserves by abiding to the regulations in order to effectively combat the pandemic. And the Development Bank of Namibia has donated over $1 million Namibia dollars to the COVID-19 Disaster Relief Fund initiated by the Office of the Prime Minister. Speaking about the donation, DBN CEO Martin Inkumbi said that although the bank is primarily involved in financing for economic development, it views the lives of Namibians as being an incalculable value and so used its CSI budget with the intent of preserving lives by contributing to the Disaster Relief Fund. In addition to its donation, the bank also announced measures to provide relief to SMEs and the tourism and hospitality sector. It could be acknowledged and expressed gratitude to other entities and individuals making donations to the fund or through their own initiatives. Welcome to Commons Corner, your daily dose of comments from the hottest social media pages. Top generals from the Namibian police and defense force have ordered investigations and the possible dismissal of the members involved in misconduct and torturous behavior towards members of the public. Alex said the situation is bad and reminded the NDF that protecting civilians is part of their duty. Helena said this behavior is inhumane and that police officers often treat civilians very badly. Fox said NDF and police officers should learn to do their work in an appropriate manner. Pamela said security guards do better job than some of the police officers. Chapaka said this is how true leaders should act and thank God for opening their eyes to see what really happens in all corners of Namibia. Petrus said civilians should not be treated as criminals. Lina saw nothing wrong with the way the police officers did their job. Boggy thanked Sebastian Dictungo for finally hearing their crime. And that is all from Comments Corner. Be sure to post your comments on our social media pages for broadcast every day only on Today on One. Today with Joseph Prince. Even though the law sounds tempting. You can produce instant results. Amen. It's a cover-up. It's all a veneer. It's all outward. It's all behavior modification. But grace, when it transforms you, be patient when you put people under grace. Sometimes there's no immediate result. But when the results come, it's permanent. It's solid. It's real. It's abundant, both in quality and quantity. Amen. Catch your favorite local music show on One Africa Television every Friday evening now at 9 o'clock and the repeats on Saturdays at half past 5 and Tuesday evenings at half past 9.
A look at the weather forecast in the Mabia interior, partly cloudy and warm to hot, with a few to isolated thunder showers in the northwest, central high ground, and at places in the south, but scattered over the northeast and the east. Windy weather is expected in the interior. The coast partly cloudy and warm with fog patches, and the wind fresh to moderate northeasterly to southwesterly. Now we look at minimum and maximum temperatures across the country and beyond.